Hello everyone and welcome to our course entitled Cognitive Psychology and in this very short introductory lecture I'm going to talk about what can we expect at this course, what are you going to learn and what sort of questions are we going to answer. So I will be your instructor for this course, I'm Sir Luis. So um, let me now walk you through, to wh um, through what you're going to learn in this subject. So I'm going to discuss the syllabus, some expectations and what are the topics that we're going to talk about along the way. So first, let us define what cognitive psychology is. So basically, um, I think that you're already familiar that psychology has a lot of subfields such as social psychology, abnormal psychology, biological psychology, um, and there are a lot of subfields under psychology, but for this semester, we're going to talk about cognitive psychology, okay? And just like other fields in psychology, this field is connected to other fields as well. So it may be an advantage if you have if you do good in related subjects such as biological psychology, okay? And because cognitive psychology is the study of how people perceive, learn, remember, and think about information. A cognitive psychologist might study how people perceive various shapes, why they remember some facts but forget others, or how they learn language, okay? So I said to you earlier that it may be an advantage if you have a background in biological psychology, but I'm not saying that these two courses would be the same, okay? It would be an advantage because biological psychology explains the biological side of cognitive psychology. So basically, which parts of the brain gets active whenever we engage in certain um, information processing. Well, in cognitive psychology, we aim to advance what you know so far by giving you um, more discussions about perception, about sensation, about understanding, thinking, intelligence, okay? And I hope that this will also help you in what you're going to learn, not just in the subject, but what you're going to learn in other subjects as well, okay? So what are the questions that we're going to answer in the subject? Say, for example, here's one good question. Why are many people more afraid of traveling in planes than in automobiles? Okay. After all, the chances of injury or death are much higher in an automobile than in planes. So I hope that you were able to read that second sentence carefully. Okay. So what does it say? There's a higher chance of being injured or dying after a, an automobile injury compared to automobile accident compared to plane accident. But I, why are we more afraid of you know, traveling by plane. It's because of what we call heuristic. And I hope that you're familiar with heuristics, okay? But if not, then this is your chance to understand what heuristics are. When we say heuristics, they're like cognitive shortcuts, mental shortcuts. So there are instances wherein our mind, our brain tend to take certain shortcuts. That's why, because it's convenient, because we are conditioned to do so, but it doesn't mean that these shortcuts are always accurate. Say, for example, when you think about planes, your mind will take a shortcut that it is dangerous. Okay, that's why people are afraid of riding planes. But in reality, it's more dangerous to travel by car. Then why are we more afraid of planes? It's because of our past experiences about aircrafts. Okay, say, for example, there are a lot of accidents involving aircrafts. And when there is an aircraft accident, it is reported in the news. But car accidents are more expected than aircraft accidents. That's why we are more primed. We are more likely to perceive that it's more dangerous to travel by plane. Heuristics are, you know, sometimes they're accurate, sometimes they're not. Okay? And that's one of the things we're going to talk about, especially when we get to thinking as well as in intelligence. Okay? And so basically what this is saying is that we have some sort of a cognitive unconscious, okay? That's not similar with psychodynamic unconscious that Freud talked about, right? So we'll also talk about this when we get to memory, okay? Why is it that some information are more salient than others? Talking about memory, look at the second one. Why do you often remember people you met when you were in childhood, but not the people you met a week ago? It's perhaps it's because when you were in childhood, the people that you have met, okay, these are they, these people are very important to you, 
and when an, when a stimulus or an information is very important to you you tend to attach emotions to it hence if a memory has certain emotions attached to it then we are more likely to remember these memories okay in comparison to the people you have met a week ago maybe they um they don't have that much of an impact to your life compared to someone you have met when you were in childhood okay or perhaps here's another explanation what if during the time that you were meeting these people last week what if you're so busy that you were not able to pay attention to them okay now we're talking about consciousness we're now talking about memory how are you supposed to remember something that you don't that you did not pay attention to okay next why do marketing executives in large companies spend so much company money on advertisements it's just because they believe that by being exposed to the stimulus then we are more likely to remember them that when we go shopping we are more likely to remember their brand okay some some marketing um some marketing officers are more likely to include um jingles or songs in their marketing so that their product is more likely to be remembered by people who's going to listen to the advertisement or by the people who buy their products so as you can see cognition is a very important part of our life but it's not something that we pay attention to every day okay because there's a tendency for us to think there's a tendency for our mind to function even we're not completely aware of it our mind takes certain shortcuts we have certain um, we have certain um, thinking we have certain biases okay that influences how we perceive situations even though we're not conscious about all of these biases and that's what we're going to discuss in cognitive psychology so that you will be more aware because awareness is one important thing for you to change your thinking and later on i will show you how are we going to apply this learning when it comes to mental health okay so here's basically the syllabus that we're going to that's going to guide us in the semester okay so first we're going i'm going to refresh you about the structure of the nervous system the basics what you need to remember okay the common misconceptions about the structures of the nervous system and the roles of the different parts of the brain and other parts of the nervous system and then i'm going to give you a general lecture on psychological research okay and then we're going to proceed to the specific topics such as we're going to begin with sensation and perception and then i'm going to add a special topic at um at every period okay for the first period our special topic will be bandura social cognitive theory particularly the part of his theory we're in he talk about moral disengagement why is it that we tend to blame victims why is it that we tend to look for excuses when we do something bad how do we justify bad behaviors and then when we get to part two we're going to talk about consciousness and then learning but eventually you have to remember what you learned and we're going to talk about memory okay and then our special topic in part two shall be cognitive theories in therapy so how do we explain depression not from freudian perspective but rather from cognitive perspective okay in in part two number four we, we are going to talk about aaron beck as well as albert ellis these two are very important contributors in cognitive therapy and in cognitive theories and in part three we're going to talk about language that's very important as well as intelligence and i split the discussion into two parts first we're going to talk about the theories and we're going to talk about measurement of intelligence as well as the issues related to measurement so that when you get to psychological assessment it's easier for you to learn these topics okay because you're going to go through these again when you go to psychological testing and assessment or also known as psychometrics in other countries and then our special topic for the third part shall be george kelly's personal constructs theory a personal favorite of mine when it comes to cognitive understanding of why we behave cognitive understanding of personality so basically this is the structure of our course for this semester and for every topic that i'm going to discuss you will be able to see a video lecture just like this and i i have uploaded all of them in our online classroom you just have to find the link okay so that it will be easier for you to understand the topic so in order for you to be able to make your way through the semester 
I suggest that you balance the readings as well as the lectures. Okay, you can either watch the lecture first, then read the readings later, or read the chapters in advance and then go to this lecture so that you'll be able to connect what you learned on your own and then what I'm go what I'm discussing as well. Okay, so why do you need to study cognitive psychology? Basically, it contributes to your knowledge in other subfields as well. For example, I don't know if you have taken experimental psychology already, but if you have taken experimental psych, you have encountered a lot of experiments that are cognitive in its approach, but it was a bit difficult for you to conduct these experiments because you don't have any background in cognitive psychology, at least now, it will be easier for you to appreciate these experiments okay or if you haven't taken experimental psychology then after the semester you can go back to this course and think of a topic that you can study in experimental psychology next this was, this will also be helpful in what we call social psychology why do a certain group of people believe in a certain um, belief or why do they endorse a certain belief why is there um, bias judgment what explains racism? Why is it that we take cognitive shortcuts or heuristics when it comes to choosing between riding a plane and riding a car? That's going to explain a lot of a lot of our social beliefs. Okay, and cognitive psychology will also help us understand abnormality. So why is it? How does thinking play a role in anxiety, in depression? What about in dissociation? What about in schizophrenia? What is the role of distortion of thinking in these disorders as well as in biological psychology? So I hope that you'll be able to connect what you learn in biopsych as well as in cognitive psych because cognitive psych will give you the more, we'll talk more about perception, judgment, thinking while in biological psychology you're going to talk about what are the parts of the brain that that perform these specific functions okay it's best if you study these course side by side for greater appreciation of how connected these two fields are and finally i hope that in cognitive psychology you'll be able to i'll be able to inspire you on what topic are you going to pursue when you conduct or when you do your college thesis or perhaps your master's thesis or phd thesis along the way okay so basically, this explains why cognitive psychology is important for you as a psychology student. Okay, so lastly, what I'm going to show you is that this is what the government requires when it comes to a cognitive psychology course. This is the requirement by the Commission on Higher Education of the Philippines. So basically, and what I'm showing to you is that we are complying to the government guidelines because like here, um, we're going to talk about perception, okay, consciousness and attention, cognitive science, um, concept knowledge and representation, memory, okay, I detail, I detail this discussion, language, problem solving, reasoning, decision making, and cognition are all combined into a topic called memory, okay? So basically, we are complying to the guidance of the government and how do we structure a course in cognitive psychology. So I hope that you'll be able to have a good time in studying the subject and I hope that you'll be interested about the different topics that we're going to talk about, okay? So I will be I will put my contact details on our online classroom so that you'll be able to ask me questions if you are you think some topics are unclear or if you have further inquiries, I may be able to give you some additional readings that you can read on your own so that you'll be able to answer your questions or think of a possible topic if you want to pursue a study under the field of cognitive psychology, okay? So welcome to this course and welcome to this semester. I hope that you're going to have a good time understanding this subject and I hope that you will learn a lot. So that is it. Enjoy the rest of the course and thank you.